Hey, Bob, thanks for joining us today. As where you're getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Hi, Brian, thanks very much for having me. Uh, firstly, I want to say a big shout out to Dan Sainsbury um, for recommending me for the podcast. Um, I'm currently a sales leader working at Gartner. We're an insights platform that helps deliver actionable objective insight to executives and their teams. Um, I sit within our conference business, uh, managing a number of technology vendors with uh, their partnership with us in the conferences in EMEA. Um, yeah, I've been working in this, this sort of space for 10 years now and a uh, big fan of sports, music, movies, and, and I used to love to travel before the pandemic. Yeah, cool. And how'd you get into sales or why'd you get into sales? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think my, when, I, when I moved back, I, I went to further education in, in America, in California, and I moved back and I so didn't have a place to stay. So I went to live with my parents. Uh, and a friend of, went to have a beer with a friend of mine. I didn't have a job. And he said, so what are you thinking about doing? So we looked up on the internet and recruitment came up and I managed to get my first job in recruitment. And it all started from, from there, recruiting recruiters. Then I got hired into by my clients to executive search. And then I just sort of found my way into, into selling through that way. But I've always and, had an interest in people. Yeah. And what you like about it was just the interaction, the variety. There's a, yeah, it's a huge amount of variety. Um, no, no two days are the same. Yeah. Um, whilst, you know, there is a process of mastery that you can work towards. Um, each, every conversation is, is different. And I loved actually the interaction with people. I think, you know, I only, funny, I've only learned this uh, a few months ago, but the difference between um, someone that is a extrovert and an introvert. So I'm very much an, an extrovert getting my energy from people. Yeah. Cool. And what did you study in school? It doesn't, didn't sound like it was sales. No, no, definitely not. It was completely way, <laughs> way, way left field. Um, I went to a performance art conservatory in Los Angeles, straight yeah. from my school in, in the UK, which, uh, you know, I, I basically received a small scholarship and it was a, it was a no brainer to leave sunny England and move to California, <laughs> to Los Angeles, right? <laughs> well, it is a big downgrade, isn't it? <laughs> But are you seeing the correlations between the two, between the performing arts and sales? Um, I think that um, there are element there are elements that you would um, take from it, but um, you know I think the one the one closest thing to it is, you know, you're putting your focus on on the other person rather than focusing on yourself and what you want to say and, and what you're trying to do. You really need to take your cue from the who, who's who you're communicating with and let them be the lead as such and i think that's something that uh, i think aligns to both those those industries it's kind of <clears throat> forced empathy isn't it you kind of um, got a how would this look to them because you can't yeah. ask them you can see their reaction i don't know but i don't know if i would call it maybe forced empathy i think you just take a real interest in what they're trying to to, to, to do yeah. and obviously from a sales perspective you you know you've got to do your homework beforehand so knowing that, that there is an angle and believing like okay I, th I think here's the fit but let me ask the customer and the prospect and, and see if, if if they come to it with their own con their own conclusions or by asking the right questions or they just flat out come and say it so so if you take an interest take a real interest you shouldn't really just be knocking on the door of any kind of personal or prospect situation without going in there sort of pre-prepared yeah. And how long did it take you to get good at sales? Well, that's a good question. Um, it depends who you ask, right? <laughs> I think, uh, I think realistically in, in the last sort of seven or eight years, I've really um, accelerated my performance and my understanding of what sales actually is and how to get the most out of it. And I think the reason for that is firstly, I love to learn. Um, and I've been very, very blessed and very grateful to have had certain key people in my life, certain, uh, my former boss, um, in where I first learned how to really sell properly and who's a good friend and dear friend to, to this day. Um, and then just through learning uh, others, uh, learning, learning with sort of some top, top performers in my company at Gartner and having a great leadership team around you as well. So I think it's an ever, it's an ever going process to, to get better that 1% each day and each week. And how do you learn best? Because I'm learning this when I teach sales, because now it's all remote. You know, the, the yeah. in-person part is taken away. Can you learn on your own by listening and watching or do you need interaction or? 
Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, and obviously have everyone, like you said, everyone has their own different styles and ways they like to learn. Personally, I, I don't read, I don't learn as well reading stuff. I need to be able to talk through it or observe a real life situation. You know, here at Gartner, we, we have a, you know, for our leadership, we show, share, observe. So the very first aspect of, of being able to coach is showing them how it's done. Um, yeah, then we share the process together and then we observe them doing it on their own. So I think for me, I think someone needs to show me or if, if I can talk through those, those learning opportunities is, is, is easier than just sitting down. Okay, here's a manual, read this on your computer or laptop or book. Well, that's it because it's not, sales is not a quiz. It's much more closer to a performance. It's a conversation, right, right? Absolutely. And I think that's fundamentally what it comes down to is curiosity and having a, a just a, a normal conversation. And how have you, or have you learned more about it when you're teaching others than you did when you're just trying to learn it for yourself? Because teaching I found to be the kind of the ultimate way of learning because you get to hear how other people receive it. And then you have to ask yourself, well, how could they receive this or receive this wrong? Yeah, I, I think, I think what's interesting when you work with the various different uh, people is they all have their different viewpoints and they all have their different communication strategies and also the way that they think. So what's, so to answer your question, I think you can learn a lot from various different peoples because you can kind of see how they would go about it. In some cases, the way I would do it is different to the way they would do it. Um, but one of the things I try and, and do is say, look, just, I'm not like the oracle or the guru that knows everything. Right. Okay? I could just give you my opinion of what I think, what I think I would do in that situation, but I'm more interested to hear about what you would do. Cause very often we're lucky as a Gartner that we've got a pretty strong recruitment process. So the people that we do hire have already got some tangible skills. And very often you, you kind of know what to do is just sometimes if you're learning, you, you just have that hesitance. Oh, am I doing this right? So you kind of quickly put it back on the coach. Well, what do you do? Tell me what you should do. And one of the things that sometimes my team, um, and historically my teams have been, maybe they get the hump with is like, you know, I'm always saying, so what, you know, rather than me answering it, what would you do first? And then, I, and then I'll chime off of that. Right. Because there typically isn't one solution. It's like, if you do this, what do you think will happen? Exactly. They kind of want to go to the manager because what, what's the right answer? It was like, well, you know, you have more context than me. Yeah. And, and if you take my answer and it doesn't work, who's wrong? Exactly. You're not going to own it. <laughs> well, I think, you know, uh, it, it depends on every situation, but you can, right. you know, it just, it just depends. Cool. And how do you like being a leader? Yeah, I love it. It's great. Um, it's, it has different challenges. It has different challenges depending, you know, if you, if you look at being an individual contributor and a leader, um, it, it, it depends. A leader is you, you don't necessarily have to have the job title as sales, sales leader, sales director to be, to be a leader, um, in a team, um, in a, in a team situation. So overall, um, I, I really enjoy it. I find it, it, it it's, com it's a competitive place to be. And it allows me to challenge myself and also love to learn new skills from others. So yeah, it's, it's pretty good. How about yourself? I like it. Um, I've done the leadership thing and I've done the rep thing more. I'm more motivated by the rep thing. Why yeah. is that? Well, the money, you know, I, I couldn't, <laughs> it was so hard, you know, working more and making less that, that kind of just went against my inner drives even though I liked being the leader more because I, I liked yeah. building something versus the, because the rep thing has this really weird reward system where you, every year you get reset. So yeah. the, the handicap becomes harder and harder. What, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> well, yeah. and, and then all of a sudden it gets to the point where it's near impossible to double your number because everything's yeah, well, pretty well known right all the and then yeah. you have to go start and doing it somewhere else 
Well, that 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 can be a blessing and and a curse. Some, sometimes you need a new pat, you know, you need a new territory patch, new change. I, I went through one personally last year myself due to COVID. And uh, whilst I loved my old patch and I loved my old clients, I was very very lucky to be in that position. Um, actually, it came at such a good time because I'd done four years in in that one space. And I thought, you know what? Maybe some complacency may I can see it around the corner, and maybe in some cases I was in you know, in, in certain areas potentially, but being in a brand new space was really, really good. Uh, just give you kind of a new lease of life to, to Diggy Hillsley and get going again. Yeah, and that's- you're starting, from, you're starting from scratch, so. Yeah. <laughs> right, because that's the downside of building great habits is it builds in complacency because you get too used to them. You're not thinking new, you're not pushing yourself into that flow state where it's just a little bit outside your comfort zone. And what motivates you? Well, being in sales, you know, naturally, uh, um, you know, money's a, money's a significant motivator. Yeah. Um, but what does it mean might, to you? Is it yeah, independence I think, or? I think what motivates me, I think that having, ultimately is having the, the choice if I want to do something, help someone, help family, be in a position to make a decision to, to, I don't know, to, to do something that requires a financial element. Yep. I don't have to think it's, 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 it's there. there. I think. Yeah. So that's, so that's really, really important. Um, and I think actually it just, I, I really want to moving forward, you know, I, I love seeing people grow and, and helping others achieve their goals. I think that's really, really important to me now. So, you know, down the road, you know, maybe this is a, a discussion for another time. Um, <laughs> You know, I want to uh, set up a few, a few, a few things in place. A scholarship to, for example, the school I went to is one of the top sports schools in the country, in the in the UK, in the country here in the UK. Yeah. And many people can't afford to go there. So I was very lucky. I was fortunate. I was quite at the time quite good at a few different sports. Um, but you know, being able to set up a scholarship fund to, as an example, it's a pipe dream. It's you know, there's a lot of money to go to that school, but you know, set, set up a scholarship fund where you could maybe send two or three kids completely. You know, they don't, the families don't have to pay, but it allows the kids to really nurture their um, their sporting prowess and develop their skills needed to, hopefully, with any luck, become a professional athlete or an Olympian. And there's many Olympians that went to the school I went to. And what do you see as the key distinction between the A and B players that you've interacted with? Not currently, but just in general. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I, think I think it fits into sort of five or six different categories. Is that all? Um, <laughs> I don't know if you could compartmentalize them. Yeah, I suppose it's a few, but fundamentally, it, you know, we, and we can dream of these in, in, in shortly, but it's ultimately mindset, planning, execution, time management, people that can embrace change, particularly now, um, and those that are highly competitive. And finally, ones that have laser focus and take massive action. Obviously, there are so many different facets to all of those, maybe let's call them pillars as such. But ultimately, I think if you were just, if you, if you to look at just the one thing out of all of those things, I think it's, it really comes down to your mindset and where that's at initially. Sets, sets the foundation for everything you're trying to achieve. Now, do you think a lot of people don't either know what that means or they oversimplify it? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, it's, a good, it's a good question. Because um, I, I do a lot of research like on LinkedIn to try and get different perspectives because I agree with you, you know, mindset, you know, but it, there's a whole bunch of things to it. You know, there's yeah. resilience, uh, you know, determination, um, the grit part, positive, that the ability to empathize with somebody else, the ownership of things, personal responsibility. What, what do you look for in that interview? Like, let's say you don't have an opening, but somebody recommends this person who they say is great, and you'll have to go to the mat to get this person hired. How do you determine if they're like an A or a B player? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. Um, yeah, because sometimes I think when you look on someone's CV, it doesn't really paint the whole picture. You know, you really need to talk 
talk to the person and get them to under, understand, understand or talk to talk to us about what what they've currently been doing, why they've made those decisions, um, what motivates what are make what, what motivates them, and just look for key core examples, specific examples of that can demonstrate um, success and also learnings because that's a big part of it as well. Is you know people you need to make you need to make mistakes but not see them as a mistake. It's actually seeing it as a learning and try not to repeat that. And that latter part, try not to repeat that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because I hear the, oh, I win or I learn. And then you ask, well, so what did you learn? Yeah. And they, can't, they don't remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's like, yeah. Because you're right. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to lose deals. We're all going to let deals slip. And we all tend to know why it happened, but how do you remember that and put that back into your process to prevent it? Absolutely. And what are some, let's talk about some of those other skills like time management. Do you find that that is still, it's such a basic thing yet? One of the hard, I don't know, I think it's one of the hardest things to, 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 to be disciplined on it is. time management. Um, you know, everyone, and I think this whole, you know, we're in a different situation now, Brian, with our, with COVID. I mean, I, I wasn't very much, a, a, I went on my first client meeting face-to-face -face in 18 months last week. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I'm sure you, you know, it's, diff it's difficult. I'm not sure what it's like in the States, but here in the UK, our, we haven't, firstly, our company had a corporate policy. We're not allowed to go meet anybody. I've been working from home. I have a young family and my little boy's three and a half and he's, you know, he's full of energy and he, and he, and he, when he comes home from nursery, he wants to come and play and hang out with me for a little bit. So, um, and, and every, everything that's going on, you've got Amazon, you've got your, your partner, wife, husband, it's anything that's going on that can, can distract you because you're not out of the house meeting clients and prospects or even engaging with your team. You're stuck either in your living room or your home office. And that could even be inside at the home um, upstairs no. somewhere. Right. Luckily for me, I've got a, I've got a, I built a, well, I had someone build a, um, a small <laughs> office at the end of my garden. And it's been a, it's been a, you know, gosh, that it hasn't, didn't come at a better time. I mean, who at the thought? Bob house or the dog house? <laughs> yeah. Well, depends, right. Depends which, which day of the week and what's happened. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Because I see it all the time. If, if it isn't like that week or even a day away and it not on their calendar, people forget and if it's more than a week out forget about it you've got to remind 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 yeah do you remember that do you remember that was that classic um david mamet play glenn gary glenn ross uh you know classic i'll tell you about that another time i want to, I want to see want to see that in, in new york but um abc you know always be calendared so i mean but having it in a cal having it in a calendar is one thing but then you know, I've been in that situation before. You snooze it. You you have a, you have a really good idea, uh, it's sort of an action to do something on your on your to do list. You put it in there, and I just keep sometimes keep snoozing it. And very often you think, well, is that a is that a tier one or a tier two activity, or actually just really a a, a thought? So, right. so it's, you just need to be really relentlessly disciplined with your time when it's in there. It's in there for a reason. You need to action it at that specific time. And finally, as well, put space in for you know, for yourself. I think that's, you know, what I've, what I've learned here at Gartner, the expression TFB, time for Bob. And one of the challenges we have, I, I think you may, you may, your listeners would probably feel the same thing is that now that we're all virtual, it's very easy to get into this back to back to back to back meetings and calls mentality when actually it's, it's not, you know, it's not good for you and you can get sort of tired. So being able to put stuff into your calendar and be um, not be afraid to say no to a, to a client or a prospect or even a, even a team meeting because that's your time for Bob and just request and see, oh, can we put it later in the day or in the evening or, or, or whatever? So there is some, flu yeah, yeah, there has to be some fluidity. And plus being a rep, it's all about time. You get comped on time, you have year, quarters, months, and your clients are just, and we are circadian creatures, you know, so we're yeah. not thinking much more beyond our next meal, nap, glass of water. <laughs> but as a sales rep, you've got to be looking quarters 
okay, how am I going to keep momentum and direction to this deal? Because they're not going to do a very good job of it. Yeah, uh, and I think that's kind of <clears throat> when, it, that, when it comes down to sort of your the planning side of things as well, being having, you know, having things written down at a certain time when you need to do it and then actioning that specific thing when you need to do it. Um, so it's not just, you know, quarter by quarter. It depends. Everyone works differently. You know, in some cases, it's week by week. Have you progressed these certain accounts or these net news that you're trying to do a certain first first outreach to? Or are these sort of companies where you're like, okay, I sent an outreach sort of four or five days ago. I haven't done anything else. Let's go back to who did I reach out to? Have I heard back? What, what was the outreach looking like? And do I need to send a, you know, a, a, obviously need to send a follow-up email and what does that need to look like or message or whatever? And I got to believe in the professional services space, that's critical because it's all good ideas. Nobody's saying this is not a good idea. It's just, where is it on the stack of good ideas? Right. Exactly. <laughs> How do you get yeah. it up to the top so it gets paid for and calendared? Well, in terms of prospecting, that's that's fundamental. That's the, that's the key there, right? I mean, you know, anyone that even if you're in, in a new business development job or an account management job, your you know, performance typically in terms of commission is, is related to that. So you need to make it one of your top priorities. Um, and if and if it's not a top priority, then the reality is you're probably you're probably not going to achieve your stretch goals because everyone has a stretch goal or everyone has a goal, whatever it may be. More often than not, you have to do a hell of a lot more than what that is to actually reach your goal at the minimum. So it's not like, oh, that's that's what I need to do and I'm going to just hit my goal. It's I actually have to, have to do this and then, okay, I've fallen a bit short, but I've hit my goal. Right, because rarely do things take less time than you thought. <laughs> yeah exa exactly exactly <laughs> it usually takes longer and it usually comes out smaller and i think that's the nature now what do you see is that the top skill of people like in professional service the people who are crushing it versus the people who are just doing okay because i gotta believe it's more than the charm and the classic sales things that we think of yeah, I mean, the one thing that always sticks with me and when I kind of, you know, if I'm mentoring or coaching um, in, in my current business, it's, you know, people do business with who they like, know, and trust. So, you know, those old school ways of selling, you know, I, I, you know, you might be able to borrow some parts of them, but ultimately it's, you got to know, you got to know your customer just as well as they know themselves, if not better. And let's say if you want to sell to the CIO, the chief information officer, as an example, at a Fortune 2000 company, if you get the meeting, which, you know, from the surveys that we do at Gartner, some of these CIOs take less than two meetings a month. Um, and that's even with existing solution providers, let, let alone net new. So if you're fortunate enough or lucky enough or skilled enough to, take, to get the meeting with the CIO, you better be going in there with your, you know, your, um, your knowledge of, of the account in terms of, you know, what their objectives are, the mission critical priorities, what's working, what's not working. And rather than you just sort of vomiting it all over them, you've got that in your locker and just, just get to know the person, have a conversation with that person. And, and, you know, you are obviously trying to go down in a certain direction, but make it seem natural and take a real and take a focus off yourself and what you're trying to sell and what you're trying to do and put it a hundred percent on the customer and, and getting to know them, what drives them, all the usual kind of stuff without being cheesy, obviously. Because I think too many people get stuck on the know and like what you just talked about was the trust. Well, that's fundamentally what it comes, what it comes down to. Right. Because without the trust, Whatever you say gets put into the question category, not the knowledge category. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, that, and that trust, you know, it's funny with trust, you know, take, it sometimes can take months and years to build uh, very often, and it takes seconds, seconds to one lose. instance to, to, to lose, you know, and um, that, that, is, that, is a, that is a challenge, right? But, um, but, but yeah, what, so. What does build it is that, you know, that 100% focus on what they're facing, helping them. Yeah, 
absolutely. And, you know, just, just having an open conversation about what's working, what's not working, what their perception of it is and how involved are they? Because you know, perhaps, you know, they may not be involved so much in the day to day. You know, they're just, they're hearing it from a top level. So actually, whilst you think you're talking to the right person, potentially, who may be the decision maker, but they're less involved. They're more of a, okay, rubber stamp type situation. So really understanding who it is you're talking to, where they fit in the, in the, in the ecosystem in the grand scheme of things and where does the box stop in? That's really, really important to understand. But then also the skill is, is how do you, jo- how do you, for example, you build that relationship with X, let's say they're the CIO um, or, you know, VP or whoever, and you realize they're not so involved, but you've made a meaningful connection. You, you, you've had a really good conversation. And it's how am I, how do you, stay relevant with that contact if you see perhaps this could be good not just from a personal perspective but for the business later on down the line how do you and that's the challenge how do you keep those relationships going or those conversations going without that being forced over throughout time right cool hey this has been a great conversation bob where can people go to connect and follow you yeah thanks very much yeah you can uh, I'm, I'm on linkedin uh bob hots h-o-t-z um and i'm currently working for gartner uh, out of the UK.